Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Liam Douglas coming at you from Roxboro, North Carolina. And in today's video, I want to talk about the Fujifilm GFX 50R. But first, please remember to check out my podcast, the Liam Photography Podcast. You can find it anywhere the podcasts are found. Go ahead and subscribe to the show. I have a massive back catalog of 338 episodes that you can listen to, including the one from this past Thursday where I sat down for a talk with Chris Nichols and Jordan Drake from Petapixel YouTube channel. Great guys, and it was a great conversation. So today I want to talk about the Fujifilm GFX 50R. Now this is one of Fujifilm's many GFX camera bodies. They have the 50R, they have the 50S, the 50S Mark II, the 100, and the 100S. Now out of all of Fujifilm's medium format cameras, I prefer the 50R because it's similar to rangefinder styling. As you can see here, it's a very beautiful and elegant camera. I love the dials on the top here for your controls. And I like the eyepiece. I think the eyepiece is really well done. And it's handy to use whether you're left or right eye dominant. And I just love the images that I get with this camera. It does have a tilting screen on the back as well, which can come in handy. Uh, I've been shooting with the 50R for over three years now. As a matter of fact, I shot all of the photographs in my first book, The Forgotten Pieces of Georgia and the Northwest Counties, which I'll put a link to the book on Amazon down below if you want to check it out and buy yourself a copy. Um, I used this body for all of those photos. Now, today is May 7th, 2023. And as of this week, Fujifilm has officially discontinued this body. Now, when the body came out new in 2018, it was $4,500. And right before it was discontinued, there were a lot of places where you could buy this body new for about $2,900, $3,000. Used, you could possibly get it for $2,500 or $2,600. But if you want one of these bodies now, you're going to have to get it from someplace like KEH or MBP or a camera store that has used gear because it's the only way you're going to get it. It has been officially discontinued. Now, the one thing that intrigues me about it being discontinued is I can't help but wonder if maybe Fujifilm will announce its successor later on this year. I don't know if they're going to announce it later on this month when they have their X Summit on May 24th. I don't know how many new cameras they might announce during the X Summit. They discontinued a whole bunch of cameras recently. The 50R, the X-T30 Mark II, the X-E4, and I believe they've also discontinued the X-T4 as well. Now, I highly doubt they're going to mention all of those replacements on May 24th. But I'm hoping if they do at some point this year announce, announce a successor to the 50R, that they make some improvements to the new model. So I do love this camera. I love shooting with it, but it is a very slow process. Its autofocus is slow. It has a 51.4 megapixel sensor. That's an older sensor. It's close to 10 years old now, so it's really old technology. And I don't know why, but Fuji chose to make the 50 series medium format cameras, both with only contrast detect autofocus, which I totally hate. I wish to God they would put the phase detect autofocus in the 50R and the 50S like they do the GFX 100 and the 100S. But I guess maybe that's why they sell those cameras at a premium because you're getting the faster, more accurate phase detect autofocus. So today I'm going to take this combination. This is the 50R with the GF 35 to 70, which is one of the newer lenses for the GFX mount. Uh, it's an F4.5 to 5.6. I'm going to take this into Uptown Roxboro and do a little bit of street photography. Now, the lens, being it is a 35 to 70 in the GFX format, uh, full frame equivalent, it equals 28 millimeters to 55 millimeters. And uh, so it's a good combination to use for street photography, landscapes, portraits, all of that good stuff, being you've got so much flexibility in the uh, in the focal length capabilities of this lens. Now, one of the things you probably noticed is I have some add-ons on the camera. I bought an L bracket with a wooden hand grip to uh, give it a pronounced hand grip because I have large hands. It makes it much easier for me to hold the camera, especially one-handed when I want to. And it gives me the ability to stand the camera and mount it on my tripod in a vertical format or horizontal, either one, which is extremely handy. 
Now, another thing I have on this camera, on all of my cameras, is this small rig Arca Swiss plate that has a hidden compartment for an Apple AirTag. I have all of my cameras AirTags so that they're easier to keep track of. And if somebody tries to steal them, I'm going to know because the AirTag is going to notify me as soon as the body, if the camera gets more than a certain distance away from me, which is extremely handy. All right, so let's go ahead and look at uh, some street photography images I did today in Uptown Roxborough, and then we'll wrap up this video. Alright, so as you saw from the slideshow, I did get some really fantastic images with my GFX 50R. This is a fantastic camera, super high quality, great dynamic range. It slows you down in the photography process, but that's not necessarily a bad thing in this day and age. Now, is this camera still worth it in 2023? Absolutely. If you can pick one up nowadays, use since it's been discontinued for $25, $2,600. Maybe you can even get lucky enough to find it for $2,300. That's an incredibly low point of entry to get into a medium format digital system. Especially when you consider that Hasselblad and Phase 1's digital medium format cameras are considerably more expensive. A used Phase 1 uh, with the digital back and an 80 millimeter lens will run you at least $10,000. Most of the Hasselblad medium format digital cameras will run you $10,000. Now the GFX 100 was $10,000 when it came out, but it was the size of a Canon 1D. Uh, so it was a quite big and bulky and heavy body. And then they came out with the 100S, which was more of a DSLR body style, and they sold that for only $6,000. And then you had the 50S, the 50S Mark II, and the 50R that sold for between $5,000 and $4,500. So a much lower point of entry for medium format. Now keep in mind, of course, being it's medium format, you're not going to be able to shoot sports with it. You're not going to be able to capture wildlife with it. This is strictly a landscape and studio camera. That's exactly what it's made for. Studio portraits, studio commercial photography, product photography, macro photography, 
and landscapes, that's where this beast excels. So yeah, if you can pick one up and you want to get into medium format, I say it's still absolutely worth the money in this part in this early part of 2023. Now maybe Fuji will release a version two later on this year that'll have some upgrades to it in comparison to this one. But again, you'll probably be talking back up to the, at the $4,500 to $5,000 price point. So you can still save a considerable amount of money if you pick up the 50R, the one that I have right here in my hand. Now also keep in mind that the GF lenses are superb for image quality, but they're not inexpensive lenses either. I currently have the 23 millimeter F4, I have the 50 millimeter F3.5, and then the one I showed you earlier, my GF 35 to 70 F4.5 to 5.6. And with those three lenses, I can do pretty much everything I need. Now, Fuji does offer a 110 millimeter lens, which you could use for portraits, because it'd be close to 85 millimeters in full frame equivalent. And they do have a 100 to 200 telephoto lens, I believe. Um, but again, they're not the kind of lenses I want to use. I got the 35 to 70 because I wanted a short telephoto lens. Um, and I got a good deal on it. The lens is originally $1,000, just like the 50, the GF50 is. Um, and I got lucky enough to get both lenses when they were on sale for half price. So I paid $500 a piece for the 50 millimeter lens as well as the 35 to 70. Now they do also offer a 32 to 64, which has a wider aperture, but it's also considerably more money. All right, that's gonna wrap up this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Please remember to subscribe to the channel like the video, comment on it, share it out on social media, and hit the little bell icon so you can be notified when new videos release. And I will see you all in the next one.